Hey guys, we're here in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm Garth Rickards and welcome to Barber Motorsports Park. And I'm Jacob Edson. We got a lot of racing this weekend, so let's get started. Barber Motorsports Park is a reunion for the Mazda Road to Indy. Pro Mazda and USF 2000 had the week off while Indy Lights was in Long Beach, but the drivers still found plenty of ways to keep themselves busy. In between races, I had to uh, go back home to Russia and uh, I got a brand new visa. Read a few books on uh, some of my favorite athletes. I had a final exam and then graduated June 4th. I moved from Eau Claire to Minneapolis uh, to start my job as basically an alcohol salesman. So I go to liquor stores, sell alcohol. Normally all the off, off weeks, I do something go karting. Sometimes race, sometimes I coach. I went actually back to Canada. I was a speaker at the Winnipeg Women's High School Hockey League as a motivational guy. So I'm not sure really sure why I got that gig, but hey, I've never played hockey in my life. It works. Whatever. This weekend is a return to action for Indy Lights. 20 year old Sean Rahal makes his first career start in the series. Rahal has previously raced sports cars for 8 Star, but never open wheel. Remember, if you haven't done so already, download the new Road to Indy TV app and follow us on Twitter at Road to Indy TV. Everything you need to know on and off the track. And speaking of on the track, Anders is headed there right now. Thank you, Joel, and welcome to the beautiful state of Alabama. We're here at Barber Motorsports Park with the beautiful Mazda 3. We're going to do a lap around the track, show you what it's all about. One of my personal all-time favorites. So let's go check it out. Just leaving pit lane now. Huge uphill here into turn two. Such a long duration corner. A lot of camber. It's almost like an oval corner here, but on a road course. And we're turning right, turning right, turning right. We're about to come into the compression here. A lot of compression on power. Drivers have got to use all the room here on exit as they power up through. Turn four. Wow, man, you can't see anything in these open wheel cars because she's sitting so low to the ground. And now coming up to the only passing zone on the track, turn five. So important to be good on the brakes here. It's massive downhill yet again as I brake and try and look for that apex point. Again, a lot of patience required in the middle of this corner. Back on power, turn eight and turn nine. Massive downhill here. You can carry a lot of speed through turn eight. Turn eight is barely a break at all. Pretty fast here. Snag of that curb and then all over the curbing here to set up turn nine. Get in that compression. Oh, there we go. Squeeze on the power, use all the room on exit. And we're on to the back section of the track. And now for the fastest section on the track here, 10 and 11. Flat out through here in all the Rotin, Mazda Rotin D cars. And then we're gonna come up to turn 12 such a fast approach to this corner here. And then we're gonna turn it into turn 13. Big compression here, so easy to make a mistake here. And the car gets light, you go over the hill, you can't see anything. Now turn 14, really, really fast corner as well. You gotta open it up, you have no visibility here through turn 15, 16, no visibility whatsoever. So you're just waiting, 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 and bring it in, bring it in. Okay, there we go, there's the apex. Now setting it up to turn 17, the final corner. Downhill, it's cambered, you gotta turn in early. You gotta use all the room on exit here. Full throttle, full throttle. And about to go across start finish again. And now we're about to approach turn one. My personal favorite corner on this track. So little room for error in this corner. Barrel down, look, get in that big compression, big downhill, and then big uphill. This is just such a good track, and yeah, it'll be exciting. Hey guys, I'm here with Arms Up and Brett Berlin. Tell us how this idea of running a team came through. Well, you know, we come from working at the racing school with the kids. Decided just to take this into actually club racing, and it's built very quickly from there. Well, do you ever wanted to race, be a race driver? Oh yeah, I think we all started out with that dream. Then you put together this operation, mm -hmm. and they decided to take it seriously. How was that process? I'm not sure we actually take it completely seriously. We kind of have a reputation for being a little bit lighter um, stuff in the paddock, but... What do you say will be the, your difference between uh, Arms Up and other teams? Why do you think you feel most proud of it? The biggest difference, we keep it a little bit light and a little bit fun. This is supposed to be fun, you know? How old are the, normally the kids that they come to you and say, I want to race with Arms Up? You know, it seems to get younger every year. They're coming everywhere from 14 to 14 on up. You know, James is, what, 35, so, but he's still a kid, don't so let him kid you. How do you manage those personalities? Because you're talking about teenagers. Yeah, you know, it's funny, all these kids, all they want to do is drive race cars until it's time to get in the race car, and then you can't find them. They're off playing in the paddock somewhere. You know, you have to run around and get them in their suits and everything else, but let their personality shine. You know, some of the guys are very serious and very intense. 
uh, the other guys joke around a little bit more and just let it play. When they put the helmet on, I imagine that there is, has to be some kind of turn off the switch when they become really professional. How, how is that process? You know, it, each driver handles it differently. Some, as soon, you know, right before they get in the car, they throw that switch and, you know, as they're getting dressed, you can see it. Some are very loose and, you know, joking around. I think it's an instinct. Obviously, things get very serious inside the car. There's a dangerous element to it and everything else. That there's nothing that we have to do to throw that switch. What is your motivation to do what you do every day? It's a fun lifestyle. Obviously, it's time away from family and everything else, but my motivation is helping these guys succeed. Obviously, I'll take pride in the prep of the cars and everything else. It's putting the name out there and getting, getting results. That was Arms Up Motorsport, another great team in the Massa Road to Indy. Now, back to you, Rob. So I'm here at the beautiful Barber Vintage Motorsports Museum in Birmingham, Alabama with two great young drivers of the Mazda Road Dandy, Way Ron Tan and Parker Thompson. To be a race car driver, you got to be a nomad. You got to go wherever you want to go. You know, sometimes you'll go to, to Europe to race carts. I know both of you guys have done that. Way Ron, you've gone all over the place. I've been pretty much around the world. I've raced carts in Asia and then I moved to Europe for carts and then the Formula Renault and one year Formula 3. And now I'm here in the States, so you know, it's, it's great experience, you know, having, having to learn many different cultures. And uh, now you're living in Texas with Jack Hawksworth. It's kind of cool for you to have someone, maybe a mentor, to kind of live with. I'm just following his footsteps. I look up to Jack. Speaking of obviously moving around the country, moving around the world, you've obviously done it. You are from the cold of Canada, like myself. Yep. But you also went and ran in Europe. It was a huge step for my career, and it was a huge shock. I mean, I didn't see my family for, for three, four months on end. And racing is tough. You're, you're going to have a lot more downs than you will ups, as we all know. So you have to cherish those ups, but you also have to work through the downs and, uh, and work hard. You've had a chance to work with someone very well known in the IndyCar circles, a former Indy 500 winner, Buddy Rice. That's, yes. that's got to be cool to have somebody like that in your corner. He takes away the sugar coat of anything. I'm never good enough. Okay. I, there's always things you can work on, and I think that, uh, that toughens you up for the real world, right? Having Buddy with me is just, it's huge. Now, Way Ron, what about uh, moving from country to country, dealing with the media? New people every time. I just got a chance to meet you this year. I've known Parker for many, many years. I've worked with him for a long time. You get new guys in your face every year. How's that feel for you? I wouldn't say I'm a people person, but, you know, I try not to be rude. <laughs> All right, that's, I like that. I like to meet new people, you know, build, build a big, uh, bigger, you know, field of uh, contacts. Yeah. You know, it, it's all good. When you have some downtime, Parker, what do you do? What do you focus on? Well, I've, uh, I've actually started up a campaign for distracted driving. It's really taking a lot of lives, and hopefully I can, uh, I can make a change. And then when I do get off time, the very rare times <laughs> that I can take a day off and I'm not in the gym, would be I, I get out on the golf course as much as I can. That's uh, in the clubs. That's good. I like that. It's the closest sport I've found to racing mentally. You have to be so focused. The only thing that's different is it's slower. The majority of the time I go golfing by myself, and it's just me in the course. Awesome. Now, way wrong, what about you? Chill out and relax, just watch television. That's it? <laughs> when I'm not racing, yeah. I had to go to school. Obviously, okay. coming from an Asian background, you know, study is always first. Very close. I managed to convince my dad and say, you know, I have one shot in the States and I want to fully focus on my racing, so can I take a year off from university and just put my head down? And, you know, he took the bait. So <laughs> this year, I'm, I'm just fully focused on racing, but on the days off, like Parker, I'm actually wanting to, to go play golf. I've gone to the driving range twice now, so that's good. We've got a good look at a couple of drivers that are very focused. They're nomads, obviously. They've traveled all over the country to, to chase their dream. This has been another In Conversation. Hey guys, I'm here with Jose Gutierrez from Juncos Racing, who's going to teach us how to do a proper taco. Mexican taco. So what's the first step here? How do we make a taco? Is to grab the tortilla, beef or chicken. American beef. Whoa, whoa. Do you usually make messy tacos like this? Is and sometimes. <laughs> uh, this is this is amateur hour right here so far. <laughs> Says the guy eating a donut. Why don't we finish a taco and then we do a, a donut? Next, you put a little bit of lemon. Green is lime, lemon is yellow, just yeah. so you know. Yeah. And then you put like a little bit of cilantro to make the taste better. A little bit of hot sauce. He's going for the qualifying burrito here. You get a little bit of a kick up the rear end. <laughs> Who do you think should try that? Gigi. You can, here we go. Oh, yeah. Very plain, but good. <laughs> Let's do one with chicken now. That's a very good taco. That will spice it up. 
It's no good. <laughs> not good. Oh, more critics here. I do not understand what has to do this with Some, tacos. Sometimes when you finish like a taco or something, like you cut a little bit of watermelon and put like a, li a little bit of chili, like to spice it up a little bit. I think he wants to try that yeah, to sure. see yeah. how it feels. Oh yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. How much of the cooking do you do at home? Like once a day, like just in the morning. He's never cooked in his life. What happened out there? Uh, oh, God. I don't know, it's so hot. Uh, thank you, Jose, uh, for, uh, for this learning. It's uh, very good. Oh. It's... oh, wow. I've seen some pretty miserable tacos made here today. I think it's time to show everyone how it's done, you know? You want donuts and, and more donuts, and that's pretty much it. Let's I make your beautiful small. taco then. Yeah. He should try. Yeah, be yeah. Right. yeah. Here, I'll hold on. Wow. Here we go. Oh, he just went for it! I like it. We're gonna make our own restaurant. It's gonna be epic. He's gonna go spit this out. Well, I think this uh, wraps our section and kitchen in the paddock. Jose, thank you for teaching us. All right, That's a wrap. Thank you. It was a busy weekend here at Barber. Six races on the Mazda Road to Indy. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. USF 2000 opened the show with their first of two races. Unfortunately for Nico Jamin, he touched Victor Franzoni in turn one. Franzoni inherited the race lead with just two laps remaining. Aaron Tielitz made his charge from third, making his way around Franzoni to take the lead and his first victory of the season. It's really hard to pass here, and eventually I just had to start getting gutsy. I was working on Jake for a few laps, and we managed to hang on and drove it home for the victory. After a brief rain delay, USF 2000 took to the track for their final leg of the doubleheader. Pico Jamin set a blistering pace this time and opened up a large lead early on. Behind him, Aussie Anthony Martin was the one to watch. He started sixth but worked his way up to second place. Nico Jamin cruised home to the win. Beginning of the race, I had a great gap, maybe like six seconds. So when I saw the full course yellow, I was like, ah, oh, that's not cool. But I did it and I'm very happy. Race one for Pro Mazda rolled off just before the rain hit. Where on Tan started on pole and led the field to green cleanly, but contact in the back of the field hampered Dalton Kell and Jose Gutierrez with Where on Tan of Andretti Autosport earning the victory. There was a bit of a snafu uh, at the start, but uh, it didn't change anything. Uh, as soon as we got the race going, um, you know, I just kept my head down and put in consistent laps to try and finish the race. Tan and Timothy Beret started on the front row in race two. Coming to the green flag, Tan went wide on the exit of turn 17, sending Beret off track. Tan was penalized for the maneuver and forced to the rear of the field. Race resumed shortly after with Neil Abarico in P1. Later, Tan found himself in more controversy. In the final laps, he made contact on the inside of Jose Gutierrez, collecting both drivers. The race finished under yellow with Abarico taking the win. To win championships, you got to be consistent, but at the end of the day, you got to win. So we did that today, and we're going to work hard to keep, keep it up. Really frustrating everything that happened today. What happened out there? Apparently, I was accused of deliberately pushing uh, Timothy Gray off the track, which I did not do. And, you know, they, they made false accusations really quick into the race, and I think it wasn't right for them to, you know, make a judgment and put me to the back of the grid. And then the race just went south from there. Iron was a pole sitter. He had control of the field. Unfortunately, after the green flag, he took that first corner wide and uh, didn't really give Tim any room. So uh, according to that, what we did was we just applied a penalty that put him at the back of the field. We actually gave him a warning prior to that. Unfortunately, the incident with Gutierrez resulted in contact. It caused us to end the race under caution, so we felt that all of those things combined resulted in a penalty of minus five, which basically put him at the end of the field. Spencer Pickett started on pole in both Indy Lights races. In their opening race, there was trouble in turn one. Kyle Kaiser got caught up in an incident too, spinning but never stopping on lap five. Spencer Pickett kept the lead and never looked back, scoring his first career Indy Lights win. In race two, there was a tangle on lap one again. Kyle Kaiser clipped Ed Jones and damaged his front wing. Piggott scored the race win and the points lead with a weekend sweep. What a weekend it's been for us, just total domination. We've been super quick as soon as we got out of the trailer and uh, you know, we've been working really hard the past few weeks. The Yunkos guys have been totally on it and uh, yeah, I can't believe that we've uh, got the lead and uh, you know, hopefully we can stretch it in May. Thanks for watching the Road to Indy TV. Stay tuned for all the action during the month of May at Indianapolis. Don't forget to download the Road to Indy TV app.